Hey, it's Tara. Today I'm going to be talking about Black Rain by Masuji Ibuse, a Japanese novel published in 1965 and then translated into English in 1966 by John Bester. Uh, this book is about the days leading up to and following, as well as one year after the uh, bombing of Hiroshima um, in 1945. The story itself is based off of real journals and first-hand accounts of what happened in and around Hiroshima um, during the bombing, and um, it's turned into a fictional narrative focusing on Shizuma Shigematsu's family. This story exposes the heart of Japanese culture and also of humanity in its recounting of the events surrounding the Hiroshima bombing and also the after-effects. So the story starts one year after the bombing of Hiroshima, and it's told from the perspective of a man, Shigematsu, who is trying to help his niece find a good marriage partnership. Um, unfortunately, there has been a rumor spread that his niece, Yasuko, was in Hiroshima at the time of the bombing, and so she um, is not a good marriage prospect because of the radiation sickness. So what he decides to do is copy out his niece's journal from the time to prove that she was actually in a, a city a little bit farther away, um, and also his own journal to corroborate her story to prove that she, you know, she is totally fine and healthy and um, there should be no problems with marrying her. What follows is a really human look at um, what transpired in that time period, and the focus isn't on like lofty pronouncements of the horrors of war and the true equality of people or anything like that. Instead it's on a family, one that is strangely um, spared and yet also ravaged by the after effects of this bombing. It's a very realistic accounting, um, obviously because it is actually based on you know first-hand accounts and actual journals um, of wartime paranoia and you know how people will do anything to, I guess, make themselves look good in the eyes of society to, in order to spare themselves. Um, it also shows like everyday life, the lists, and how difficult it was to survive at that time. Um, lists of like foods that they were eating and daily me menus. And there were some comments on how uh, maybe the enemy wouldn't wouldn't be spending all this time, you know, bombing them if they understood how poorly the Japanese were doing. It also shows the effects of, I guess, like, being overwhelmed by such horror. Um, they see so many dead bodies and so many um, orphaned children and um, so many horrors after this bombing that they start looking away and ignoring, but it's not a complete numbness because they the main character always acknowledges when there is that problem, like, I I am looking away. It's not just that it happens, it's that I, I can't stand to look at it, and I can't stand that I can't help, um, so I'm passing it by. It also goes into the smallness of people during the war. T after the bombing, everyone was so conscientious of the survivors and, you know, doing everything in their power to help them. and. After, you know, a year later, now they've got these vicious rumors about Yasuko and um, victims of the radiation poisoning have to take it easy. Um, if they work too hard, then they will overtax their bodies and the radiation sickness will attack them. So they have to sort of lead a leisurely kind of life. Um, and of course it's a year after the war and Japan is very busy rebuilding their cities and their you know villages and it's a very work intense period and these people can't help to the full extent because they would literally be killing themselves to do so um, and right after the war there was no problem with that but short you know even just one year later people are making snide comments about how you know their inability to work and maybe saying that they don't want to work, um, which is something the main character struggles with as a victim of radiation poisoning, um, his desire to work and his desire to do things, but also his desire to live and survive, and which is a, a recurring theme in the book. 
you know, how far are you willing to push yourself in order to survive. Um, between all of the people that are, you know, shown as, you know, war profiteers and people who are taking advantage of the situation and generally being horrible, there are also a lot of people who are genuinely um, nice and helpful and um, disingenuous and not really doing anything for their own advantage just be out of the kindness of their hearts. And it provides a nice, um, really nice contrast of just how different people can be on the spectrum. The whole novel is written in a very understated manner. Um, it's pretty much fact, fact, fact. And there are some political opinions expressed uh, within the novel, but they're not super powerful and they're not... Basically, he gives you this information and shows you the horrors and he lets you sort of make your own decision, which is something I absolutely love when, when authors do. You know, I'm a capable reader and I can draw my own conclusions. That isn't to say that there isn't a slant to it, because there absolutely is, but um, I appreciated that it was, you know, a little bit lighter. This is a book that I highly recommend for pretty much everyone. It's, it is war literature and it is depressing, um, but it also has its light moments and its moments of humor and its moments of, you know, love and family. Um, so it's very moving, and I guess that's all I really have to say about that. If anybody has read Black Rain, um, I would love to hear what you have to say about it, and um, I would love to have a conversation with you. Uh, so far I haven't, uh, none of my friends have read it that I know of, so if you have, please let me know. Um, and if you haven't, I would definitely recommend that you do so. But anyways, I guess until next time.